Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul and welcome to yet another Red Game with Tedocom video and 2017 in the tech industry. 2017 is starting very much how 2016 left us. That is, uh, with a lot of expectations from Intel, NVIDIA and of course AMD. So in this video we're going to be tackling three pieces of news, that's right, count them, three. The first of which is a Vega architecture preview countdown which has popped up on a website, we'll get into that in a moment. The second is a similar countdown which has popped up for Nvidia and an expectation of a product launch so we'll get into some speculation onto that in just a moment. And then we're going to finish this video off with the longest, with the longest excuse me, of the three topics which is Intel because they're shuttering KBL uh, hyphen H and instead we're going to be seeing KB Lake refreshes hit next year with 10nm coffee lake and a few other bits and bobs so first things first let's talk about vega now at the new horizon event there was a very brief preview of vega now the word through the grapevine is that that was not intended to be there and i've said it uh, several times over by now you can tell it did not have the production value or the the confidence from amd as the uh, Ryzen stuff. It just, it felt, I wouldn't say it felt bad, it just felt less organized. Now the word for the grapevine is that they only put that in the last minute simply because of the Doom demos, which are now infamous um, in their, uh, in their uh, demonstrations, if you will, which have popped up on the internet. And then of course loads of websites got hold of them and there was no way that AMD could hold the cat in the bag. It had, you know, bolted down the street at that point. So a chap on Facebook, so I want to give him full credit, Abram, actually messaged me um, and pointed me to a website which is ve.ga. Now this website is very simple. It says, countdown to the Vega architecture preview and embedded upon it is a 1 minute 30 video. That CES 2017 is going to be very interesting. From what I've heard, they were intending to show off Doom and some other stuff at CES 2017. As I said, that got leaked. So whether we're going to see official demonstrations of that, I'm assuming we will, plus possibly some other bits and pieces. I'm going to make the assumption that we'll probably get more stuff on the higher end cards. But what I'm really hoping for, and I think most of us are, is like, what is Vega? In other words, there's been a lot of ambiguity of what in the balls the relationship to the 400 series and Vega is going to be. Now, I'm going to give you the very, too, uh, very, very, very quick too long didn't read. There's been multiple theories, multiple leaks, and multiple different uh, um, theories as to what's going to happen. The first is that Vega is going to completely replace Polaris and there's going to be Vega 10, Vega 20, uh, Vega 11. So Vega 11 will basically replace Polaris, Vega 10 will not. It will be the very high-end architectures. Others say that no, Polaris is going to coexist. And another one is the, you've seen these driver leaks which show a new Polaris, which is Polaris 12, and a Polaris 10 XT2, which hints as a dual part card. So it's a lot of parts, a lot of moving parts, and Quite frankly, we're not sure what's what. For example, it could be that Polaris 12 is going to be a mobile part only, or possibly only for a certain uh, demographic, perhaps only for OEMs, or only for, say, the Chinese market, or something like that. We just do not know. I would love to know what's going to happen. Um, for example, maybe AMD will confirm that, yes, Polaris 12 is a thing, but it's only for very, 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 very low power uh, solutions, for example, embedded solutions in, let's say, uh, s slim form, I don't know, laptops. It could be. We just don't know. So I would love to see some confirmation as what the hell is going to happen with that. Because Polaris and Vega are not the same architecture. We've discussed this multiple times before, so I don't want to go over too much old ground. You can certainly check out the what we know about Vega video on this channel. But basically, Vega, from what we can understand, uh, this is from Mark Cerny, this is from AMD themselves, from the small amounts of information that's been released, the architecture is actually improved. So there are some definite changes to how the GPU functions. So it's probably going to be an increment, whether it's a 0.1 or 0.5, so in other words, it'll be like the equivalent of GCN 4.5, or whether it'll be the equivalent of GCN 
5.0, we don't know, but it's an increment of the GCN architecture. Anyway, that took way longer than what I'd uh, hoped to go through, so that was a bit of a thing. Now, NVIDIA are gearing up also for their own product announcement. One thing that did slip by that I haven't covered, not because I didn't spot it, just because eh, I wasn't really super um, interested in it until there's like an official announcement and we know more about it, and that is the Club GeForce Elite service. We're not 100% sure what the hell that's going to entail, but it looks like there's going to be like some exclusive games, some streaming stuff, and other bits and bobs, and it could be kind of nice, but it's very interesting because the GeForce Elite service will also have top priority for GTX 980 Ti owners to upgrade to the 1080 Ti, which is kind of weird because this was um, leaked via a... Um, I believe it was a LinkedIn post, if memory serves. It was a job advert. But that, of course, basically confirms that the GTX 1080 Ti, shock and horror, and, you know, I'm sure everyone in the mother is surprised by this announcement that the 1080 Ti is a real thing. We don't know too much about the 1080 Ti, other than, obviously, it's going to probably sit either between the 1080 and the uh, Pascal Titan X, or possibly about the P Pascal Titan X, but maybe with a few small tweaks here and there. Um, but, gen for example, it's going to have less VRAM or possibly a narrower memory bus. The, mo the main thing we do know about it is that it's going to have 10 gigabytes of VRAM and it's going to be based upon the GP102 core. Unfortunately, as one can imagine, that doesn't really tell us the number of CUDA cores or uh, clock speeds of the VRAM or anything like that. We could certainly do some speculation, but that's not really the purpose of this video. Now, my feeling is that NVIDIA are probably going to wait until the very last moment to announce what the specifications of this card are going to be. I imagine that they also will possibly wait on the pricing. I, I, I From what I've heard, um, just from various people like in theories, and to be honest with you, it doesn't really require like a rumor mill for this, NVIDIA have wanted to wait to see what AMD have with Vega. Now, obviously, what they can do to counter Vega really depends on how the performance of Vega. So, for example, if Vega turns out to have 4,096 uh, shaders, runs, and obviously I'm just pulling numbers out my ass here, I just want to point this out. If it runs at, let's say, 1,700 megahertz, or let's say it puts out a ridiculous amount of single precision performance let's say it has like 12 or 13 t flops and on top of that it's very very efficient as a whole nvidia are going to have a very difficult time countering that with their current architecture it's not to say that the gtx 1080 or 1080 ti or whatever would suck it's just that you know at the end of the day it's an older architecture and i think most folks are expecting amd to come out with something that would be a definite upgrade like okay there's a reason that this thing is like basically a year younger than the Pascal architecture. Unfortunately, as you can imagine, we can only wait. And finally, let's go through Intel. Now, Intel have been under a bit of a weird position. They've been under a bit of uh, stress at the moment. A couple of years ago, even a year ago, Intel were basically king of the desktop, king of the mobile, king of everything when it comes to CPUs. Unfortunately, Ryzen looks like it's an absolute beast. There are some reports that Ryzen overclocks to 5 gigahertz on air. I just want to point that out. Now, whether that turns out to be true or not, let's even assume it's false, and let's assume that the top clock speed of Ryzen is about 4.4 gigahertz. It's still very impressive, and assuming AMD can be very aggressive with their, pri with their price point, it's going to be hard for most folks to argue, assuming a pretty decent IPC, uh, which is about equivalent to, let's say, Skylake, or possibly a little bit slower than Skylake, most folks are going to definitely want an 8-core 16-thread CPU if they're doing a lot of hardcore work over a 4-core 8-thread CPU in the equivalent of like the 6700 or 7700K. So to this end, uh, there has been a new leaked roadmap by Benchlife.info. And it looks like the 14, sorry, the 10 nm Coffee Lake is still on track for 2018, 
but Intel have decided to cancel KBL-2. And the reason it's doing that is because it's citing a lack of it considers demand. And it will only be uh, going for the KBLR. Now this stands for KB Lake Refresh. Now, we're not 100% sure, of course, as to the reason they're doing that. But do remember that essentially Intel are not new to 14nm. It's been on it since, I believe it was, uh, was it Broadwell that bought it in? I think Broadwell. So Ryzen obviously now is coming into play. And Intel needs to, I guess, consolidate what it has uh, in the works. So Coffee Lake, um, there's going to be multiple Coffee Lake CPUs, of course, but the top one is going to offer, for the mainstream, six cores. Now, obviously, six cores versus eight of Ryzen is not exactly competitive in theory, but as we all know, a core and clock speed versus, you know, workloads and all that stuff don't necessarily equate to the same performance across different architectures. So it's possible that if Coffee Lake can run at really high clock speeds and be more efficient and have good overclocking headroom and be competitive in terms of pricing, as well as, of course, Intel have, well, their brand, it's Intel, they probably will be more than competitive enough to fend off AMD until Ryzen Plus, which God knows when that's officially going to hit the market. So I'm going to make the assumption that KB Lake's seventh generation of processors is probably going to not be the most exciting for most folks. Now, I, I, most people do know that KB Lake is basically the same thing as Skylake, just with higher clocks. And I'm judging, of course, primarily based upon the comments that I'm receiving in videos and Twitter and Facebook, but a lot of you folks just don't seem to give a crap about KB Lake, and it's kind of hard to, I guess it's kind of hard to, for me to argue on favour of KB Lake, because there's very little that makes it exciting for desktop users. If you've got something like a 6600 or a 6700K, do you want to jump to a 7700K? Probably not, to be honest. On the other hand, if you've got a 7700K, uh, sorry, si sorry, a 6600K, and you need those additional threads, and once again, assuming Ryzen is competitive, you've already got the DDR4 memory, and that's the thing. So, yeah, you'll have to buy a new motherboard, but to fully make use of the uh, 200 series platform, which KB Lake offers anyway, which is primarily IO based, let's just be honest, you'd need to buy a new motherboard anyway. So, at that point, most folks are probably going to go the Ryzen route, so it's going to be very interesting for Intel. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you all soon. Normal stuff, if you like the video, well, you know, like the video. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.